Welcome back. Yes, that temporary structure was a scaffold. Now, David, um, we had a little bit of fun last Friday night, as I seem to recall, on uh, April Fool's Day, and one of the possible nine-letter... Well, in fact, not words, but nine-letter combinations that, uh, that you came up with was goat's head. Now, of course, it's not actually a word, but it actually is a common usage, or it's, it's, uh, it's something that you found over the it's, weekend. It is a phrase, in fact. So, while I was acting the goat, uh, ended up the joke was on me, uh, which is wonderful. Because in the dictionary here, goat's head, which is acknowledged as a phrase, is, in fact, a type of plant. And uh, it's one that was imported from South Africa in the uh, late 1800s. And um, a lot of people would notice uh, it has a very distinctive wooden uh, nut or fruit that has three prominent uh, prongs and, or spikes coming from it. Um, and for that reason, it's called a goat's head because of its horns. But also, in, in a, uh, just recently, we were talking about regionalisms. Regionalisms being, you know, words that are used in different parts of Australia and have very specific meanings for the same thing. That's right. Uh, and the goat's head, in, in fact, is a uh, shining example because it is, uh, across this uh, great land, it is called either a bull head, a cat head, a cat's eye, a GG, a prickly jack, a three-corner jack, a spiny MX, the Californian punctureweed, <laughs> and my favourite is the caltrop, C-A-L-T-R-O-P, and it's the same word for the device they use uh, in World War I and II for uh, stopping t uh, tanks, essentially. It's those spiked balls that they throw in front of uh, tanks to stop them advancing. So uh, it all relates back to that goat's head prank. Those are all words for just this one plant in different parts of Australia. I think I should play pranks more often. I discover new <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fascinating one. Thank you, David. Let's have a look at our scores. Kapil, seven points. Victor is on 11. And we're moving towards some more letters now. And uh, Kapil, you to choose again, please. Can I get a vowel? You can. Thanks, Kapil. A. And a consonant. H. And a vowel. E. Another vowel. O. A consonant. D. A vowel. E. Consonant. R. A consonant. M. And one more consonant. And lastly, T. Here's the clock. How many for you that time, Kapil? I just got four. Four. OK. Victor? I think I got an eight. An eight? Well, that sounds very promising. Let's go with the four first. Dumb. Could you spell that? D-E-R-M. OK. Victor? A mothered. M-O-T-H-E-R-E-D. Well played, uh, Victor. That's a great get uh, for eight. And I wish Metrohead was a word, because that <laughs> might be another discovery. <laughs> a piece of serendipity. But they were the two eights. Very nice work. And well done to uh, Victor as well with eight points. Well, some high scoring going on here, so let's move on with the letters. And uh, this time, Victor, your choice. Can I have a constant, please? Thanks, Victor. C. A vowel. A. A consonant. R. Um, another vowel, please. I. Um, another consonant. S. Another consonant. R. Another vowel. E. Another consonant. T. And another... Uh, I'll go for a vowel. And last letter, O. And time starts now.
Well, Victor, that was uh, a big eight last time. What do, you, what do you think this time? I'll try another eight. Another eight? That sounds very good. What about you, Kapil? I have a six. Let's hear the six. Arrest. Arrest. And uh, your eight, Victor? Eroticas. E-R-O-T-I-C-A-S. Erotica in the plural, David. Well, obviously erotica uh, is a noun, but is it uh, possible to pluralise that noun? And here, it is the literature or art dealing with sexual love, so therefore it is a mass noun, uh, just as furniture is a mass noun. Uh, you cannot have eroticas, you cannot have furnitures. So, unfortunately, Victor, uh, that can't be pluralised, so it takes us back to Kapil uh, with a rest. Well done, a, uh, a solid six. The word that I found here is uh, creators, C-R-E-A-T-O-R-S for eight. Very nice work, David. Um, bad luck to Victor, but a good six points for Kapil. Let's head back to the numbers, uh, and this time, Kapil, it's you to make a combination choice. Can I get uh, two large and four small? Thanks, Kapil. Two large and four small. And our numbers are one, eight, Three, one, the two large, 75 and 100, and the target to reach is 519. Let's chase the target. Did you like that combination, Kapil? Not good. <laughs> Not good? How did you go? Did you get within the scoring area? Not within 10. OK. Victor? Yeah, I might have stuffed this one up too, I think. OK. Well, unfortunately, uh, Lily, nothing from Victor or Kapil on that one. How did you go with it? It was tricky and it was uh, kind of segmented. That's what made it so tricky. Um, 75 plus 1 plus 1... I'm just going to put this in, a bra in brackets because obviously that's 2 by eight is 616. I'll write that down. Um, take away 100 gives you 516. And then you add the remaining three, gives you kitchen sink of uh, 519. Excellent. Thank you, Lily. Well done. But uh, unfortunately, no score for Victor or Kapil. That means their scores stand at the moment. Kapil, 13. Victor, 19. And we're heading into another break. And another word mix, of course. Goth hour. This time, the clue is to leave no stone unturned. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 